It's a nice ball into him. Jonathan David to take this one on with the power shot. Oh, I made a right mess of that one. It's Kone now out to Matt Target on the left-hand side. He dinks it in, surely. Oh my word, Jonathan David. Welcome back everyone to the start of season three of this Newcastle United career mode. And it is a season in which we will be playing Champions League football for the first time in this career mode, courtesy of a 2-0 win against Arsenal in the Europa League final, meaning we got our hands on our first piece of silverware in this career mode. The Europa League champions is what they will call us this season. Absolutely fantastic way to end last season, and as I said, it means that we will be playing Champions League football. However, with the departures of both Joe Linton and Almiron, it's meaning that our squad is looking pretty threadbare, to be completely honest. And if we want to improve on back-to-back -back fifth place finishes in the Premier League, and if we want to try and compete in the Champions League, it means we are gonna have to invest some money and see if we can bring in some better players. And with the board giving us 199 million to spend, it means we've got a lot of room to negotiate. Now, I spoke all the time at the back end of last season about the importance of me bringing in a central midfielder and a winger. However, when I was looking through my squad hub, I stumbled across this man, Elliot Anderson. Now, the first couple of seasons here, he's gone a little bit under the radar. I have sent him out on loan. But looking at his status and his profile, yes, he is only rated 73, four points behind a departed Joe Linton. However, according to FIFA, he does have the potential to be quite special. If we take a quick look over at his development as well, he's actually got some pretty well-balanced stats. He's got four-star weak foot, he's got high attacking work rate, and his stats overall are not too bad. So actually... What I'm thinking I'm going to do is, I'm going to keep him at the club. I'm going to change up his development plan to get him focused on being a box-to-box -box midfielder rather than just being balanced. And I'm thinking in the early part of the season, I'm going to give him an opportunity and a little run out in a few different games. We're going to see how he gets on in the first six months of this season. And then depending on what his progress is like, I'll have a quick look in January to see whether or not I need to bring someone better in. However, whilst the winger is still the number one priority in this transfer window, there are a couple of other things I need to bear in mind. First and foremost, Kieran Trippier. He's now aged 33 and rated 82. Now, he is my club captain. However, he is on the decline. Started off this career mode on 84, and obviously now he's dropped by two points and he's not going to get any better as the season progresses. So I'm going to keep hold of him, obviously, because he is my captain and he is still a very good player and technically still my best right back in place of Liveramento, who is progressing very nicely, though. However, with 12 months only left on his contract, I am going to again see how he gets on for the first six months of the season and then make a call as to whether or not I'm going to extend his contract or look to bring another right back in in the summer. The next issue is this man, Fabian Shaw, only aged 32, but he's decided he wants to retire at the end of the season. Now, he is rated 77. He was really good for me in the first season and he was a decent backup in the second season. However, I've got to make a call as to whether or not I'm going to stick him on the transfer market or I'm going to keep him and let him see out his contract and then bring in a new centre-back in next summer. So let me know down in the comments below, what do you think I should do? Should I stick him on the transfer market and get rid of him and bring in a new centre-back this summer? Or should I keep him at the club as a backup and then see whether or not I want to bring someone in who's even better in the next summer transfer window. Before we get on to our incomings though, we've only really got one major outgoing that I've got planned for this transfer window and it is that man, Jamal Lewis. He finally leaves the club. I've been trying to get rid of him, I'll be completely honest, for quite some time. But eventually, after going out on loan a couple of times, we get him out the door. He's off to Genoa for 6.1 mil and according to the board, they are absolutely delighted. Another A rating. Now, whilst we do have £200 million to spend this transfer window, I'm very keen to keep this career mode as realistic as possible. And that means I don't want to spend silly amounts of money on players that either would never come to us or play for teams that are bigger than us anyway. So I want to make sure the players that actually do join are players that realistically would join in real life. And that means after some tough back and forth negotiation with the manager of Leeds, the incoming transfer that we are going to be bringing in this transfer window is that man, Luis Sinistera from Leeds United, 25 years of age, and he will be 59.8 million pounds. Now, I've played with Sinistera on my Leeds United career mode that I definitely recommend you checking out, by the way, and I can tell that he is definitely someone I can rely on. According to FIFA, he has that something special, and at 25 years of age, 84 rated, he's still got room to try and grow and develop as well. In terms of looking at his stats, Four-star skill moves, four-star weak foot, high attacking and defensive work rate as well. He's got great physical stats, 
decent mental and technical stats as well, and I think he will provide ample competition for this man, Alain Saint-Maximin. Now, I know I said at the start of this episode I was going to wait until January to see whether or not I wanted to keep hold of Kieran Trippier, but when a club like Juventus come in with a £19 million offer for him when he's 33 years old and he's only got 12 months left on his contract and he's in decline, it is incredibly difficult to say no. And that is exactly what has happened. Kieran Trippier will be leaving Newcastle United this summer out the door, off to Juventus, 19 mil, and it isn't just me who thinks that's a good deal. The board as well, another excellent A-rated deal. And that is our club captain leaving the tune. And not only does that mean that Liveramento now becomes our starting right back, it also means we need a new captain. And that man, Bruno Gomares, will now become the Newcastle captain for this season. It also means I'm now going to be on the hunt for a new right back as that man, Tino Liveramento, needs some competition moving forward. Let me know down in the comments below, who do you think I should bring in? Obviously, money is no object, but we do want to keep this career mode as realistic as possible. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. What right back should I bring into the club to challenge this man, Tino Liveramento? But speaking of Tino Liveramento, he is absolutely buzzing that Kieran Trippier has left the club, immediately knocking on my door, saying that he thinks he's the right man for the first choice right back in this club. This is your chance, my friend. You need to grab this with both hands. Before we go any further, though, I do want to check out the board objectives heading into this new season. And the main ones, really, firstly, brand exposure. 10 games without defeat this season. I think that's going to be quite a tricky one. But sign two young players, that's probably fairly easy. In terms of continental success, though, whilst it is a low priority, the objectives on FIFA just keep getting sillier and sillier by the day. They want me to reach the Champions League final in our first season in the competition. Absolutely ridiculous. And in terms of domestic success, again, they want me to win the FA Cup, which I've had no success with the last two seasons. And again, they want me to finish in the Champions League spots this season in the league. So I've got a feeling the board are going to be on my case all season long. But we're going to kick off our first game of this new season and it's going to be an opportunity for a silver aware right away as we're going to be facing Benfica of all teams in the UEFA Super Cup. In what must have been the upset of the season last year, Benfica of all teams must have found a way to win the Champions League and here they are competing against us for this European Super Cup. Now in spite of them winning the Champions League last season, surely we've got to be going into this game as favourites but in spite of that I am taking no chances whatsoever. My first 11 will be the strongest 11 I can put out. Liveramento, Tomori, Botman, Cessnion at the back, Pabengo, Guamaras, Fernandes in midfield, St. Maximan, Jonathan David and Brennan Johnson Johnson up front. New signing Sinistera has to find a place on the bench. The Mori at the back lays a nice ball across the left-hand side into the path of Ryan Sessegnon. Does really nicely to get away from Gonzalez. And now he tries to bring the ball forward into the path of Jonathan David. Really nice stuff early doors inside this first half. Jonathan David trying to twist and turn. Trying to find runners, but no one's shaping up for a pass. Jonathan David still has the ball. Trying to look for the run of Liveramento. Instead, he gives it to Brennan Johnson. Feeds it back to Jonathan David. It's 1-0 here. And Jonathan David will never have an easier goal. Easily just passed it into the back of the net. Great work from him to, in the build-up to the goal. Laid it off to Brennan Johnson, who laid it lovely off. Back to him again. And it's 1-0 early doors here in this first half. He lays it out wide to Baumgartner, but gets it back from him again. Nice twist away from Pepega, and that's a wonderful ball into the path of Barrera to Diaz. And he strikes. Good save from Nick Pope. Going to be Gonzalez with the corner. Looks like he's going to go long into the box. Can Tamori get his head on it? No, he can't. It's headed away, and Nick Pope, fortunately, gets his hand to that one. Brennan Johnson trying to get on the end of this. Oh, nice from Brennan Johnson. He's got the pace to get away from the defender. Has he got the pace to continue his run? Yes, he does. Oh, I'm going to try and play in Jonathan David who's just straight offside. Sven Botman now goes into the feet of Enzo Fernandez. I'm going to try and go over the top to Jonathan David. It's a nice ball into him. Jonathan David to take this one on with the power shot. Oh, I made a right mess of that one. Sessegnon now goes into Enzo Fernandez in the centre. Enzo Fernandez turns nicely, gives it back to Ryan Sessegnon. I'm going to try and go down the left-hand side to set Maximan. He's just about managed to stay on side. Goes inside this time to Bruno Gamares. Bruno Gamares shapes up with the shot. Oh, my word. What a sensational strike. That is an absolute screamer. Where on earth did that come from? Lovely bit of play from St. Maximan to lay it into the path of Guimaraes. And Guimaraes just struck. It looked like it was a fairly tame shot, I've got to be honest. But it just seemed to swerve away from the goalkeeper. Gave him no chance whatsoever. And Guimaraes gets himself on the score sheet. It's 2-0. Auschnez for Benfica now into the path of Diaz. 
who takes it on, tries to drive forward. Player switching again, throwing up some problems for me. Goes out wide on the left-hand side to Baumgartner. He turns nicely to get past Liveramento. Gives it back to Diaz. Gets it back, but Enzo Fernandez is there to put the challenge in. But Liveramento just shoved off the ball as Baumgartner picks it up again. Looks for a cross. Liveramento is there. Defended much better this time. And Tomori manages to wriggle his way away from pressure. Lovely ball up into the path of Ryan Sessegnon. Ryan Sessegnon now to Bruno Guimaraes. Plays a lovely ball out wide to St. Maximan. He whips a ball into absolutely no one. Enzo Fernandez into Jonathan David. Jonathan David can release the goal scorer. Bruno Guimaraes, he's in here for our third. Bruno Guimaraes makes it look easy. It's all too easy in this first half. And somehow we find ourselves 3-0 up here. Benfica have completely fallen apart. And you cannot tell me this Benfica managed to win the Champions League next. Then Botman, oh, that's poor from Botman. Just gave it straight to Diaz. And Diaz now can try and accelerate away into the path of Baumgartner for 3-1. Good save. It's Brooks for Benfica. Plays a nice ball into Arshnez. Now he gives it to Baumgartner, who turns really nicely, trying to get away from Tomori. Nice ball into the striker, who lays it off to Bernardo. And Liveramento, of all people, is there to get the block in. And now we can try and counter-attack it. Oh, my word. That is absolutely sensational. St. Maximan to Jonathan David. What a save. It's going to be Pobega with the corner here. Pobega on his left foot, puts it into the edge of the six-yard box. It's headed away only as far as Tomori. Pobega will pick this one up again for a second bite of the cherry. Whips it. Well, not a bit of a half ball in in the end, but it's Enzo Fernandez who just about manages to pick it up. He's got St. Maximan on the left-hand side of him. Good ball into St. Maximan, who lifts it into the box. Pobega, what a save from the goalkeeper. Auschnez now has the ball. He's under pressure, but cool, calm, and collected gets it away. Only as far as Jonathan David, though. Jonathan David picks it up, strikes with his left. Another big save from the goalkeeper. Nice ball into Castellanos now. The uh, Benfica striker lifts it forward, but Tamori is one step ahead of him and manages to get there first. Ryan Sessegnon now with the ball. I'm going to try and float this all the way over to the right-hand side, all the way to Brennan Johnson. What a sensational pass that was from Ryan Sessegnon. Brennan Johnson just dances around the defender, lifts a nice ball in. Can we get onto it? No, we cannot. And that's it. The referee blows the whistle. Game over here in what was a really, really comfortable win in the end for Newcastle United. And we are going to get our hands on our first piece of silverware this season. And it is going to be the goal scorer, that man, Bruno Gomares, the new captain of the club, who is going to be lifting the trophy. The first time in his career he will be lifting the trophy at the tune. Here we go. UEFA Super Cup champions, Newcastle United. It has a fantastic ring to it. And what a fantastic way to kick off season three. However, now though, it is time to turn our attention to our first game of this new Premier League season. And it is away at a newly promoted Norwich. And due to that midweek European game, I have had to make several enforced changes. Liveramento, Tomori, Slotterbeck and Matt Target coming in defence. Pobega, Kone and Enzo Fernandes in midfield. Elise, Alexander Isak and Sinistera making his Newcastle debut. It's Kone here in midfield. He's come in for a slightly fatigued Bruno Guimaraes and this is his opportunity to try and shine here. And he does some nice work to get around the Norwich defenders. Out wide to Elise now. He ends up getting caught up, but Pobega picks it up. Out wide to Liveramento. Kone gets it back now. Goes all the way out wide to Matt Target on the left-hand side. He picks it up. I'm going to try and find a ball into the box if I can. But he's blocked off by the Norwich right-back. And Sinistera, to be honest, is just getting in the way. But Target eventually gets a ball in. And it's a good ball, but we just can't get on the end of it. It's headed away by Norwich. And eventually they can get the ball clear. Zara for Norwich. Into the path of Torres now, the striker. Sorensen in midfield. Lays a nice ball out wide to Nunez on the left-hand side. He plays a good ball in. But Liveramento reads it so well. And then does the dance round the attacker. Brilliant stuff from him. And then lays a lovely ball out wide to Matt Target. Sinistera picks it up. Plays a ball back out wide to Matt Target on the left-hand side. Goes in field now, looking for options. Finds Enzo Fernandez. I'm going to try and go out wide to the right-hand side to Liveramento. Whips a first-time ball in. Pobega tried to get his head on it. Just couldn't get there. Kone will pick it up, though. Out to Liveramento. He finds Elise, who's just straight offside. It's Nunez now for Norwich. Into Torres. Torres turns, gives the ball to Zara, who's got an option on the right if they can find him, but they can't. But he gets it back in the box. Zara could have taken that one on. Nunez has it, and he strikes it straight at Pope. What a massive opportunity for Norwich there, and they've completely blown it. 
My target now goes into the feet of Enzo Fernandez. Oh, nice turn from Enzo Fernandez to get away from the defender and try to play it into Kone, but it was well blocked by Norwich. Zara now can try and play this across, but he doesn't. It's really well intercepted by Liveramento, who I must say has had a very, very good game so far. Pabega goes out wide to Sinisterra. Sinisterra checks onto his right. I'm going to go for a shot here. It's straight at the goalkeeper. Nunez now for Norwich, tries to take it forward, but Pabega is there ahead of him really nicely, and Pabega ends up getting a lot of luck there as it rebounds off of the Norwich player into the path of Enzo Fernandez, who strikes. Great save. Going to be a corner here that the midfielder Pabega is going to take. Whips it in nicely, tried to get our head on that, but we just couldn't get there in the end. It's Elise now, who's been pretty quiet so far in this game, who picks it up. Tomori goes all the way back to the defence. Liveramento on the right-hand side, trying to stretch the play here and whip a nice ball in. It's a good ball in. But again, Norwich get there first and we can't seem to break down this yellow and green wall in the first half. But Bega this time with the corner. Goes into the edge of the six-yard box this time, but it's Elise who picks it back up. Gives it to Babega, going to have another chance to throw one in, and it's not the best ball, but it's Matt Target who's going to pick it up now. Matt Target, nicely taken down, gives it to the midfielder, Kone. He finds Babega, trying to find Elise on the left-hand side, on the right-hand side, sorry. He takes it onto his left, goes for the strike. Oh, good save again. Norwich proving a very, very difficult team to try and break down here as we throw another ball into the box, and it's another big save from the goalkeeper, Gunn. He's on absolute fire today. Oh, nice stuff here from Kosanu. Really nice stuff. And he drives past Matt Target, goes in field, gives it to Sargent. Really nice play. Torres ends up dragging that one right into Liveramento. Liveramento turns nicely, gives it to Kone in the centre of the park. He goes to Enzo Fernandez. Nice play. Now he's got Sinisterra free on the left hand side. Sinisterra can try and cut inside here. He does cut inside, lays it into Pobega. Oh my word. It's Sinisterra again now into Kone. Kone finds Enzo Fernandez. He turns nicely, gives it back to Sinisterra on the left hand side. I'm going to try and find a ball in. It's not the best ball, but Enzo Fernandez will pick it up once again. It's Kone into the path of the substitute, Jonathan David. Gets past the defender, goes to strike. Oh, it's over the bar. Jonathan David picks this one up again, tries to lay a ball to Sinister on the left-hand side. He's going to try and dink this across. It's a decent ball, but we just cannot seem to get our head onto these things. It's Kone now out to Matt Target on the left-hand side. He dinks it in, surely. Oh my word, Jonathan David. We've only got a few minutes remaining in this game and the ball is in our half, not where I want it. It's Tamori now, goes out wide, but gives the ball really cheaply away. And Norwich now can try and fire off an attack here. It's into Zara, the central midfielder. He goes out wide to the left winger, out to Nunez, gets it back though. He's got an opportunity to put it in the box. And Nunez in the end gives it straight to Nick Pope. The referee blows the whistle and the first game of this Premier League season ends nil-nil. We cannot say we didn't have chances. We had ample chances. Jonathan David in particular had two that he should have taken. A header from literally two yards out that somehow he managed to put wide. And in the end, we drop two points here and it finishes nil-nil. And that is where I'm going to leave things today as we find ourselves 12th in the Premier League table after one game, a very disappointing draw against Norwich. And with Spurs up next, a Tottenham team that are top of the table at the moment, things are only going to get even more tricky. Winning a European trophy in the first game of the new season is not a bad way to kick off season three in this career mode. But as you know, we only find ourselves with now one right back at the club following the sale of Kieran Trippier. So let me know down in the comments below, who do you think I should bring in to provide some stiff competition to that man, Tino Liveramento. Aside from that though, if you have enjoyed this episode, please feel free to like and subscribe. And as always, I'll see you again next time.